Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to remove and install the Holden Commodore sedan VT, VX, VY, VZ series. So there's not much that changes through these models and the process to remove the headliner board is almost relatively the same. However, what does change is between the two sun visors, you may have an overhead sunglasses console. If you don't have that, you would have just a middle rear dome light. Also, what can change is you may have the sun visor lights in the sun visor shades itself. And if you do, you would have the wires that run from the sun uh, visor itself into the headliner. Also, at the far back where the rear grab handles are, you may have courtesy lights behind and in those grab handles, just below them. And if you do, the wires will run from them into the headliner, well, on top of the headliner, and you would have to make sure that they're all detached before you take the headliner down. Also, you may have your wiring system that powers the whole headliner lights and all the courtesy lights. You may have the harness attached to the headliner board itself on the driver's side B pillar. So when you take the B pillar down, you can get in there and unplug that before you drop the headliner down. Otherwise, it will snag and pull on the wires. Other models will have the wires that run straight into the roof, um, through the metal part of the roof, and then just down into the headliner itself. So the headliner actually comes away from the wiring system. Um, as for colors, they come out in a few different colors. So they will come out in a light gray velour, which is a number three material, light gray velour. They also come out in a flat knit material, which is like a stitch pattern. And that will be our number seven cappuccino light gray material as well. So flat knit is more of a stitch type of pattern and velour is more of a softer type of fluffier type of feel. Also, they do come out in like a shadow gray or like a charcoal black. And that's called anthracite. That's our number five material. So if you're looking for how many meters you need for one of these cars, you require 1.5 meters for a sedan model. And that will be plenty of overhang as well included. Make sure you check the link below in the description for all our recommendations of all our products that we use. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel and let's get stuck into the video. Okay, so today's job is very similar. It's going to be the same across all the Commodore range from the VT, the VX, VY, VZs. They're all pretty much going to be the same method of removal of the board and reinstall. So with this one, um, I've started off by taking off the grab handles themselves to remove the A pillar. And uh, then I flex the B pillar um, away from just from the top. So there's a single screw that holds it. And um, the dome light in the middle here that we take out, that was just take pop off the lens cap itself. And then you'll gain access to two screws behind that lens cap to drop down the dome light. We'll just basically um, unscrew it. Um, they can have sunglasses consoles up the front. That's the, pretty much the only thing that can change. You can see here how you can kind of drop down one side on the, say the left side and then pull it away from the right side. Now, um, it's one quick way of getting the boards out but um yeah ideally you probably want to be taking off both sides of the pillars so we're going to show you that and um on the, the the later models like the vys and the vz's they usually have like a wiring harness stuck up on the board above the driver's side b pillar onto the actual headliner board itself so you're going to have to want to unplug that before you pull down the headlining board so um yeah so the only changes that these cars have um, from what I'm showing you right now is they can have the rear courtesy lights on the back C pillars behind those grab handles so then you would have to um, make sure that they're unplugged before you remove the board and they can have the front sunglasses console rather than the center dome light they're pretty much what changes on these cars so in order to take the roof lining board out you're going to need to drop off those two uh, those four grab handles themselves so you just pop off the little um, the flap, little uh, plastic flap that hides the screw. You can get in, um, you know, remove those um, the, them by, but just like basically a flathead uh, screwdriver or even a like a little upholstery type of pin. And once you've done that, you just gain access to those two Phillips head screws. Just remove them. So take off all four grab handles. That will allow you to remove the A pillar. And um, I don't remove the B pillars completely. I actually um, just uh, flex them up away from the top so you just remove the one screw and I don't remove the C pillars completely as well I just flex them away from the top as well that way the headlining board has room to come out and get removed and then obviously go back in as well so once that's done you slide the headlining board forward on these models 
to um, bring it away from the rear seat pillars and then slide it back and just gently rest it on the back seats there. So you can see here that how that wire, this um, car doesn't have the wiring harness stuck to the board. It actually runs up from the dome light into the channel of the head roof lining board. It's well, the roof lining itself, the metal part of the car that that's where the wiring harness runs. So it doesn't actually get glued to the board. But on the VYVZ models, they usually have it, um, you know, kind of glued to the board itself. So you got to remove that. To remove these boards out of the car, I like to position position myself in the front seat there. And just, um, I have a blanket down over the console and the seats just to protect the console. And I'm keeping my hand as a buffer to not drag it along the side uh, B pillar or the side um, trim itself, like that little uh, uh, door trim there. And also just keep it away from the door trim itself when it comes out. Uh, so you can see here that you cannot uh, reuse these old material because basically what makes them sag is just the foam behind the material just gets old and crumbly and you can see here it's just um, brushing off quite nasty and if you were to spray glue on that now you end up just getting a massive glue stain come through the material so today we're doing an exchange with one that we've got ready and prepared ready to go in so um, out with the old in with the new so to reinstall just go through the passenger front door um, because this is all overlapped with brand new material around the edges you haven't got that sharp um, edge of the fiberglass board dragging along the interior now you've actually got a, like a nice padding on the edges so it's not going to mark the interior on the reinstall so um, that's good you don't have to flex it as much to get it in there and once it's in I like to just rest it on the back seat there that way I can hop out and um, reposition myself so if you were buying this material they come out in a few different colors they come out with a t today's job we're actually working with a, um, a number three material which is a light gray velour but they also can come out with our number seven material which is a cappuccino a flat knit as you can see right here in front of us that's a, um, a flat knit material it's got like a stitch pattern and the velour is more of a softer feel um, so they come out in those two styles of light gray. They can also come out with a, a color that's kind of like a shadow gray, like a charcoal black, and that's called anthracite. That's usually seen on the VZs and VYs, and, but you can actually get in the earlier models as well. So, um, And that would be our number five material. As for how much you need, you'd be want to be ordering 1.5 meters for these um, standard sedans because that's all you require. Um, they actually measure in um, a bit less than that if you were to go re uh, like rotate the actual headliner board differently on the roll itself and then you can actually go like uh, like 1.2 I, I believe but yeah we sell it at 0.5 meter length so 1.5 meter is your order to um, get material to suit these cars if you have got a WL or you know um, WK like Statesman's and Caprices they are longer at the back so you're going to need probably the two meters or just make sure you measure those ones because um, I haven't exactly got the measurements in front of me but they're basically the same setup on how to remove and reinstall these cars they're very um, very similar pretty much so position it all into location um, at the back there you just want to line up the back section there's nowhere to actually position it itself you just got to line it up so it's quite center up the front there there was a couple of tabs you could um, we push the headlining in and under and the tabs actually hold up the front then push in those rear C pillars so they're all located and lined up all right now we go ahead and put in the A pillar um, before we do it all the plastics like the actual grab handles and the sun visors you want to put all these um, pillars back into location of course so feeding it down that back section there can be quite um, difficult sometimes depending on how stubborn the actual uh, plastic is, the actual rubber seal is you just kind of just got to make sure that it doesn't tear into the seal itself and just the pillar goes under the storage seal so it doesn't actually rip into it but once it's done that you can feed it down to the uh, behind the dashboard so it gets in there nice and seated and then um, run that seal so it sits over the top of the uh, a pillar itself and then once you feel that it's all in location you can give that gentle um, hit with your palms or your fist just to um, knock in those clips as long as they're all located and lined up perfectly we can bring you can reposition the headlining board to um, make sure that it all lines up at the front there because we haven't screwed in any of the sun visors yet so we can still shift the board around a bit um, push in the B pillar make sure the rubber seals not um, you know jammed up and creased make sure it's all seated nice and good 
and um, see how we, could, we lined up the front uh, sun visor clips there. You can see how it's all lined up is ready for those screws to go into and the screws uh, are not hidden. So um, that means it's pretty much lined up. And um, yeah, we can go ahead and um, do those because that will line up the front but just by putting those in. Now we know that we the boards all lined up at the front. Um, yeah, so it's all coming together quite well. Sometimes you want to do them by hand on those sun visor clips because they can get quite brittle and if you do them up too tight you can actually bust out um, the actual uh, little uh, surrounding um, chamber inside. So we're just using an upholstery skewer now just to pull out any imperfections and creases and uh, little fingertip dents. But they will come out over time as long as the, you know, the car just sits there, bakes in the sun and as the car warms up the foam and fabric is going to expand and just give off a cleaner finish anyway. But we will go ahead and just give this one a nice good clean over um, with our cleaning products that we use. And um, yeah, just use the upholstery skewer as well just to pull out any imperfections. And give the, the plastic trim work and just a bit of a freshen up. We'll just give that a bit of a clean and tidy up. So we'll go ahead now and just put the sun visor on. Um, you want to line up one screw first and um, then get the other one in. And um, sometimes they can be slightly off here as in like... Um, you know you've got to kind of push the headlining material or the board out of the way to line up the screws because they can sometimes the board's slightly in the way but um yeah it's it's uh, that all went up pretty well so um yeah so we move on and put on the grab handles now as for tools that we were using for the um these models you, you're pretty much using the phillips head screw the flathead screwdriver and sometimes on the sun visors they do have the t15 torx head screw bits so they're pretty much all the tools you would need for today's job and um, other than the, the recovery stage but we have several videos that um, will show you how to recover one of these headliners when they do sag so we'll make sure that that link is in the description below. So make sure that you're using the correct screws that came out of where they ca um, came from. So that little black screw was the one that holds the B pillar in up the top and the little tiny um, chrome little screws the phillips have screws they're the ones that hold in the grab handles and the gold ones are usually the ones for the center dome light and the super thin screws are the ones for the sun visors um, which can be the t15 or the t10 torx head screw bit you can see that rear um, c pillar right at the back there has a um, slight lift to it this one was like slightly broken from when we first started you can see right at the back c pillar you can see um that it's lifted a bit it's pretty common to see that because they're quite brittle at the back section there or maybe someone's you know yanked at it when they maybe installed a um you know like a antenna wire so there's not much we can do about that but we could probably put a bit of 3m double-sided tape or a bit of velcro maybe to close the gap at that back section but that's why it's always good to take a photo before you work on these cars that way you can see what's um what needs to be done and and um, other things like as in like um, you know what's the lights are are they working or not so it's always good to check the lights before you start the job and check them at the end make sure that they haven't played up so we're just giving the pillars and the headliner a good clean over just to remove any um, grubby marks and um, give it a good presentation as well uh, we're just using the super cheap auto brand carpet and foaming upholstery cleaner it comes in that little uh, purple and um, blue can so um, from our experience it doesn't matter how much you spray it doesn't leave a stain behind so that's why we like the product and um, yeah we can move ahead and probably just jump in the the driver's side now and um, finish off what we've done so um, the dome light obviously needs to be reinstalled as well so um, yeah it's always good like I said to just make sure that the lights are working before you start so just make sure you do check all your lights any lights under the sun visor check your dome lights, your sunglasses console if there's any, the rear courtesy lights behind the grab handles, just make sure that they all work before you start the process. That way in case you you know accidentally hit the wire with a screw and you earth the system, you, you kind of know exactly where you've done it, you can, you can double check on yourself. But um, yeah, just check after you've reinstalled all the units, just make sure that they all operate correctly. Those lens, cap, those lens caps there, we just, um, they're, they're usually quite sturdy and strong on these cars so they normally never give you any issues but just give them a bit of a clean because sometimes there's, you know, there's moths and spiders and weird stuff in there I don't know how the hell they get in there but yeah give it a good clean while you've got it off uh, and um, 
and we'll just go ahead now and we'll jump in the driver side and finish off that side. So if you're finding this content helpful guys, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and click that subscribe button as well um, to help this channel grow and maybe even just leave a comment below on what you might want to see on the days and weeks ahead. We can always load up that content for you guys or what you found um, nice and helpful in this video and um, that would be also good feedback to hear too. But um, yeah, so uh, recline the seats back up again because we're done with this side and um, Obviously, you want to just you know give the upholstery a bit of clean as well in case there's any foam fibers, orange foam fibers that has landed off the headliner, the old one, onto the upholstery. Just want to make sure you vacuum or clean all of that up. Um, so yeah, we hop into the driver's side. We're pretty much um, just got the pillars and the grab handles and the sun visor to put on this side. They have got a little microphone that we got to position correctly on the A pillar. And you've got to also make sure you don't snag that wire while you plug in the A-pillars as well. So you push it down under the seal, down behind the dashboard there. And once it's in location and down further enough for that first little plug, the clip to go into, you want to start by pushing that in. And then there's um, a middle clip and a top clip. And you want to just make sure that they all get plugged in. Come to the, the back section there, feed it under the B-pillar run your finger down there um, or like a plastic trim removal tool just to feed um, that seal over the top of the A-pillar itself so it sits all nice and flush and it doesn't look all creased. Um, make sure that wire for that, um, if you have got the little microphone, just make sure that it's all um, seated correctly and you got enough room to plug it into place. Um, it was a bit snagged up the top there so we had to just drop down the B-pillar, the A-pillar, sorry, um, just to feed that uh, microphone into location more correctly. So we'll just finish off installing the A pillar and then we'll uh, put on the, those two grab handles, the sun visor, give this headliner a tidy up, ready for handover. We will suggest to the customer that they always look the best after a few warm days because as the car warms up the foam and fabric kind of expand and just give off their cleanest finish so any imperfections usually just swell out. Um, and that's it guys, so hopefully you found this video helpful and we'll see you on the next one. Catch ya!